Boom. Hello. Happy Thursday, everybody. This is LT. I am doing a presentation today with a guest teacher and CEO and founder of a company. So I'm super excited today to bring you some information. This is specifically for classroom teachers that have students that they're working with and want to do something amazing and, and engaging. So welcome to the family book form for teachers. Today is February 25th, 2021, 5 p.m. California, 8 p.m. Um, Eastern time and 12 noon where our guest is located and you'll find out where that is in a second. Okay, so who am I? I am LT, also known as Latasha Jimerson, also known as the Buddy Teacher. I'm a teacher, author, and book coach. I help people write stories, to leave and pass on to their grandchildren. Um, it's kind of like a legacy is what we focus on in my courses, um, helping educators really put words down because most of us educators don't focus on ourselves. We serve and then we forget to tell our own story. So I help people do that. Um, coming up, April 6th, 7th and 8th, mark your calendar. I am hosting a pajama party teacher summit we are gonna have an amazing time. I have over 20 speakers. They're gonna be giving you lots of information about what you can do to avoid burnout, to deal with burnout, and basically to come out on the other side successful. So if you look to front and center, there's a beautiful lady in a green shirt, and she is going to be sharing with us tonight something that's incredible that's engaging, that's fabulous for students, parents, and communities. All right, so here is our agenda. We're already into the introductions. We have a five minute video we're gonna show. We're gonna do a quick overview. We're gonna play with some technology. We're gonna answer some questions and then we're gonna close at about six o'clock. We don't wanna go over an hour. If your questions keep going, we may go ahead and just schedule another evening like this, no problem. All right, so we are going to have our wonderful guest, Carrie Furzy. She is the Family Book Forum founder and CEO. She is a published author and former English teacher. Woo -woo! Her <laughs> talk at the summit is gonna be about how to gamify literacy, engagement, and the well-being of our students. So tonight, she's just gonna give us a quick overview of what she does and she's gonna lead us in an activity to where we can actually engage so that we know what our students will be able to do if you decide to take this technology into your classroom. So this is Miss Carrie. If you would like to interact with her on LinkedIn, she's under uh, Carrie Furzy, family book form founder, author, presenter. Go ahead and connect with her so that you can talk beyond today. And I'm gonna show you a quick video um, about what it is that her program does. Let me know in the chat if you're able to hear. Students to aged care homes to talk to elderly. Are you able to hear the video? Yeah. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna Residents, it's a great way to screen stories about schools which send their students to aged care homes to talk to elderly residents. It's a great way to get young and old together to talk about how our lives have changed over the years. But now there's a really amazing new program where that interaction leads to something tangible with the students using technology to document some amazing life stories. In an aged care facility in Sydney, there is a thousand plus years of life experience. Family love is very good. Being shared by young and old. We were very yeah. poor, but my mother was a really great woman. High school students make a weekly visit to residents of the Glenhaven home, not just to talk, but to record life stories. So kids are already coming to aged care and having a nice chat, and that's nice for the people that are in the room at that particular moment. But using technology, we can leverage that activity and make it so much bigger 
and so much better than what it is. Carly Furs runs Bookform, the technology which not only records the conversations, but also transcribes the spoken story into text into their digital book. Plus, the kids can then uh, invite the resident's own family to contribute stories in any language and photos directly into the digital book. Which, when the project is finished in eight weeks, will then be turned into a physical book, a family heirloom. We keep this love in the sunrise. That's a bush called a Mallee bush. Mallee bush. Yeah. Jack McAvoy is a former bush jockey. He drove trucks in the mines, turned his hand to carpentry, and as he says, more jobs than hot dinners. And that's my father and me sitting at the framework of that house. His weekly visitor is Naomi Rodriguez. She says it's been a real lesson in how things used to be. Bert was saying that um, he left school at 13 because, like, the high school was too far away for him to go to and, like, not everyone went to high school. In another room, it's Phoebe quizzing Nora. And my name, my grandma name. Oh. My grandma, my father, mother, Nora, and I'm Nora. That's so nice. It's like a family tradition. It is, it is. Being passed a particular down. in Asia, yeah. Nora was born 82 years ago in Cairo, the eldest of eight. And then I moved from Cairo to Alexandria. And then I moved from Alexandria to here, 1967. Uh, I came here March 67. Rudy Welsh was born in Stuttgart in Germany. Two months before the war started, so therefore I was a little bit early for the first three or four years, but uh, towards the end, 44, 45, you can remember quite a few things. Things his inquisitor, Hannah Saker, has been sharing with her friends. Everyone is always like, oh, I want to come sit with you and listen to what Rudy has to say, because, you know, just by telling them what's happened, they just think his story is so interesting. Initially, the young and old were hesitant, but the program suggests the questions to ask to get the memory stimulated and the stories flowing. Often we get these grandkids asking grandparents questions that no one has ever asked, and they're, they're generating these stories that even their adult children have never heard, so that is fantastic. You start looking back at photos and things like that, bring back the memory, yeah. I mean, I've got to stop and think of the little things that happened back in my life and she's recording it. For all of these families, this is an opportunity that they maybe never would have had beforehand to capture the stories and the history of their family to, to carry on and share with the many children that will come after this. Rachel Aquilina from Our Care Aged Care is not long out of high school herself. It was her idea to introduce the pilot program. It's a... Uh, a program that seems so simple yet so rewarding and uh, I, I it's such a rewarding experience for me to see the kind of relationships that the students and the residents are making and if, if that could happen everywhere that would be fantastic. Carly Furs is promoting the technology to schools hoping they will adopt it as a fundraising project. So they can sell the books similar to um, uh, parents and families buying the kids uh, photograph every year they can buy their family book and so the school can make money. And precious memories will be preserved forever. Just imagine now, when, when I'm not here, that book will still be here. I think it's beautiful. You get to document their lives and then they can keep it forever. Oh, and who wouldn't want to tell what their story to such story. gorgeous young people? Uh, it, it's just beautiful. Isn't it lovely to see the young people interested and engaged as oh, well? the whole thing. What yeah. a win-win. Love that done. story. Really terrific. Can't wait to see the books. We're going to see those in about mm. a month when they come out. Okay. We'll bring you the update on that. Awesome. So happy to see that. It's your turn, Miss Carrie. I'll just unmute myself and I'll start sharing my screen. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So hopefully you can see that okay. Yes, so, perfect. Thank you. So thanks for this opportunity. Um, I created this technology for anyone to easily create a book but it's sort of morphed a little bit into uh, being targeted to students. But 
teachers can also, or any, anyone can create their own book. So it's into a dynamic page. So instead of just typing onto a blank page, you can speak into the page, you can interview someone else to speak into the page, and you can invite other people uh, remotely or else anywhere else where to input information into your page as well. So um, is it okay just to play this quick one minute video here of yeah. an overview of it? So I'll just play this video. Sure. This is on the website. A blank page can be daunting for anyone. Family Book Forms page helps students collect spoken stories while connecting with their family, friends and community as communication projects for school. The stories and photos are automatically formatted into a digital book that can be shared online and printed into a real book. Family Book Forms online dashboard guides the student to type or record the stories in any language and the text instantly appears in their book. Students can invite others to contribute content directly into their book too. With one click, all the stories, memories and photos are formatted into a digital book with front cover, contents and chapters. Stories can be shared in classroom lessons for literacy, history and peer bonding. Books can be shared online or printed into a beautiful keepsake that families will treasure forever. Let's get everyone talking and connecting again. Create your personalised family for anyone. Okay, so we'll just pause that. So that's on um, familybookform.com. If you just go to this uh, website here, you can scroll down and you can see examples of uh, book projects that teachers can do. So teachers can create collaborative class books by inviting their students to contribute content into a book. So uh, you can also, as a teacher, invite anybody you want to contribute content, but this is a great uh, STEAM or technology project to do with students. And so this one, for example, um, you can do it with any existing writing projects that you're doing in your classroom. So this one was for um, poems, and this teacher did it as a Mother's Day celebration book. And so this was for grades five and six, and they were doing um, a Mother's Day uh, STEAM project. And so all the students that were invited as they contributed their content, it automatically propagates in this contents page here. So this is the digital book that automatically um, gets formatted once you input content into the dashboard, and I'll show you how to do that. So this um, principal did an introduction and the teacher uh, inputted a chapter about her STEAM project, and this was her documenting students in the class, creating their, um, their poems, using the technology, logging in and out, and creating a painting or a drawing or a photo of their mother. So the kids could do this at home on their computer, or they could do it in class and they can log in and out. So uh, the students get a template page, and I'll show you what that looks like and um, they just type directly into that template page, upload artwork, and it collates into this digital book. So this is just a fun little project to get kids uh, using technology as a tool and collect, collating um, all this content into a book. So you could do this with um, any content that you wanna collect into your book. So that's a nice example of that project. One that's really popular and is also one that could raise money for your class or raise money for your school, um, it, it is the family recipe book. And so this is where students, um, or you can invite your students to contribute their favorite recipe and why it's their favorite or something like that. And it automatically propagates into uh, the contents page and into chapters and you can create an introduction about why you're doing this project. But ideally it's a great project for kids to do with their own families. And so they create, um, they interview different family members or they send invitations to family members to um, submit their content. So here you can see that this is in German. And so it can be in any language. You can speak into the page, you can, um, uh, people can contribute content in any language. And this is how students can use technology as a tool to automatically translate that. They can translate it into English. Um, and then download the PDF of it, or they can keep it in the whatever language they want and, um, and, uh, and download and print and share in whatever language they want. And all books can be um, branded with your school's logo or with whatever logo you want to put on the back page there. So this is a project that is a great way to um, uh, engage kids in a, a fun, fun family project. I'll just 
go back here. And so back on the website, there's other examples of a, a biography where uh, students can interview their family members, but you can also do this as well. You can interview people um, if, you, if that's a project that you're doing, where it doesn't have to be about family. Uh, you can interview people on any topic you want. And so whether it's your project or students' projects and they're going into the communities like that um, TV you saw just before, they're interviewing about lives, but you can be interviewing people about any topic you want. So this is a great way to get kids engaging with um, communication projects and talking to people in their community and collecting valuable um, information and stories into a nice tangible product that can then be monetized and gifted. So uh, this book project has um, been a huge success and this is a great one uh, that I'd love for teachers in uh, the US to be doing. And uh, you can get a free demo book and so you could create um, your own classes or your own communities, um, COVID-19 and me books. And so this teachers um, invited their class of kids to contribute how COVID had affected them. So they automatically propagated here into the contents and each student had a double page spread. And so this is a great way for you to collect your students' um, experiences through the pandemic. How has how's each individual personally been experienced? Um, or maybe you, the, you um, assign to the students and then they can create their own families or communities, uh, COVID-19 and me books. So this is just a, a very easy way to collect um, dispersed content into a, a polished digital book that can then also be printed and um, gifted or sold. So this is uh, great for uh, as a primary source historical record of your students' experiences or people in the community's experiences. So this is just a great way to easily collate many people's um, experiences and points of view. So there's a testimonial here from a San Jose teacher who used it in an online class and there's case studies here. So if you do do um, a project with students, then let me know about it because I'm a, a Google partner. And so there's lots of opportunities to showcase your projects if you do it with a school. Um, and uh, you can uh, present yourself through Google and ISTE is very um, looking forward to uh, showcasing teachers projects as well if you'd like to do that. So you can sign up for free as a teacher. So in the chat, um, LT has posted her ambassador code. So if you just click on the teacher sign up, then you can sign in with a Google um, email or uh, any email that you like. And the next step from this is uh, you can enter your name and um, pass, uh, create a password and an ambassador code. So if you enter um, LT's ambassador code, it's in the chat, it's 9RNCFQ, then um, she gets points for projects that you do at school and then she can also um, incentivize with discounts or coaching. Um, and so that's options. Um, down the track as well. So I am just going to log in to show you what you would see once you've signed up as a teacher. So this is the teacher's dashboard. This is not what um, students see. This is not what anyone else sees, but just you. It's your dashboard where here you've got a free try. You can create one free um, demo book and that demo book that every book uh, that's created is online for one year so you have access to log in and out and um, keep adding to this book and keep inviting people to contribute content to this book for a year it's online as a digital book um, you can also download a pdf as much as you like throughout that year and invite um, you've got two hours speech to text that you can use um, 200 people can contribute to your book and um, the, I'll show you that dashboard in a second. So this is the project dashboard where you can uh, have access to explainer videos here. So this is what I'm going to be walking you through now, but there's a video in your dashboard. You can always go back and have a look at it on how to create a collaborative class book. Here's how you create a project and here's how you can integrate it to the classroom platform if you want to. Um, you, as you add a project, you just click up here and a license is $10 for a book that's online for a year. So you can um, create a project and here are some example um, of projects that I've created here. So 
you can, when you create a project, if it's maybe the family recipe book and you want all your students in your class to contribute to your class book, then you just buy one license and that's $10 and all the class can contribute to that book and that's just $10. Um, or if you want every student to create their own collaborative uh, recipe book with their families, then you can buy uh, a license for each student and that creates this unique um, URL here, that's that project's URL, and you share that through either classroom or email it to the students, however you, uh, you usually communicate with them. They, As those students click on that link and sign up, they redeem a license. And so what they see when they sign up is um, uh, the, their own books dashboard. And so this is what the book creating dashboard looks like. So I created um, book form and family book form to be, um, to make it, to create a book as easy as filling in a form. So that's essentially what it is. There's just a template of a question and an answer box, question and answer box. So here you can um, follow the prompts there of the title of the book, the uh, author of the book. You can upload a photo to the front cover. And on the left-hand side here is the scaffolding that helps you to create a book or helps the students to create a book. And so here's the introduction tab. And here is where you can type directly into the page or you can speak directly into the page by clicking on um, the recording button there. And this is where if it's you or if it's students, they um, have access to over 200 languages. So for example, if a student is interviewing a grandparent or someone in the community that speaks a different language, then they can just uh, choose the language here or choose the accent because in English, there's like 10 different English accents. Um, so they can choose which one they can start and stop the recording as much as they like. And then they return back to the dashboard and there, there would be a blue button there. And that's where they click um, import and it automatically puts the text into there. So if the person has spoken German or Spanish, it will appear um, in German or Spanish here. And uh, once you go to the digital book, you can, um, it translates it if you've got that functionality in your dashboard, or you can just enter it into Google and translate it. Um, the next scaffolding on the left hand side is person. So if um, the students are interviewing, for example, grandparents, then they can uh, edit that and make it anybody's name that they want. And here is the scaffolding prompts. Um, if you are creating your own I book and um, you don't want the prompts or you or uh, older students don't need the prompts, they want to come up with their own questions, then you can just turn the questions off and all it leaves is just answer boxes with the recording functions there. And um, there's photo template pages here. So you can have one photo to a page, two or four photos to a page. And so you just follow the prompts of uploading photos or the students follow the prompts. So if you've got the questions on, this is where if you're assigning it as a project to students um, to create a recipe book or interview grandparents or interview someone in the community, you can ask them to choose maybe three topics or six topics. So this is a great way for you to be able to personalize and differentiate for different students' abilities. So they can choose um, what topics they wanna to cover and each topic has different question prompts that they can um, uh, interview the person about or they can speak their own answers into these answer boxes. So this is just the, the scaffolding to help um, build content into the book. Um, if you don't want uh, to follow any of that scaffolding, you can just add a blank chapter there down at the bottom. But students can just work their way through the scaffolding on the side here, um, pick a topic and just follow the question prompts. So there's like 300 questions. Um, and so uh, it, it's an easy way to quickly build up content in their book. Um, over here, if you're uh, wanting to create your classes uh, COVID-19 and me free demo book, for example, then you could just do an introduction if you like, you could speak it. And then over here at the collaborations tab, this is where you can add or view your contributors. So this is where you can invite your class of kids, you can upload a list of your students and with their emails, or you can just invite uh, students or you can invite people to contribute to your, to your book one by one. So this is where you'd enter their name and email. And this is where you type a message and you might be asking students to contribute 200 word 
poem, for example, um, and upload one photo page if it's going to be maybe um, a poem book and a celebration of mothers, for example, like that project I showed you, or you can get them to write a poem or a story about uh, their hero or their favourite um, uh, pet or whatever you want your students to write about, you give the instructions here and that appears on their template page that they open up. So they, here, here you can see all the students or people you, you've invited to contribute to your book. You can click on view their contribution. This is where you would see the content that they've contributed. You can edit that um, and you can see what photos they've contributed to your uh, to, the, to the book. So you can edit the content, um, remind them if they haven't submitted anything yet, you can delete them. Um, and if you go up to the My Book tab, this is where you can arrange chapters, you can view the digital book, you can uh, download the PDF and download the audio files. So um, for example, if you click on audio files, this is where students um, can present uh, the uh, audio files of the stories that they've collected in the classroom, whether it's in person or online. And so they can play the real voice of an interview that they've done. So this is another way that they can do proof of work that they've done, proof of their learning. Um, they can download those audio files and, and play it to enrich, it, enrich your classrooms. So if you wanted to view the digital book, this is what um, the digital book looks like. So whatever content you input here in your dashboard automatically propagates instantly into this digital book. So you can toggle between the dashboard for inputting content and the dashboard that um, displays the digital book collation of all that content. So this is just an example of the COVID-19 and me book. Um, and as people contribute their content, it automatically propagates into uh, the contents page here and you can edit that. So there's an edit tab here. So if you see a spelling mistake or something's not right, you can just edit that and it goes back to your dashboard to make that edit. So all this content is just automatically propagated. There's not so much design functionality because this isn't about um, designing. There's, there's not much functionality of changing font or colors or things. This is the whole point is that it's more, more about the interviews and the collecting of the content um, rather than it being a design uh, product. And so that's an overview of the dashboard. You can create um, your free uh, collaborative class book by just coming using your demo book, uh, starting to fill out the uh, prompts here, inviting students to contribute to your book, and then you can share that digital book online, maybe in a newsletter or through email. Um, you can see that there's uh, sharing prompts over here for the digital book here. You can email it to anyone, post it online. Um, and so those people, whoever you share it with, um, will be able to access this digital book at any time, updated as you keep adding content. So that's um, a very quick overview of the dashboard. If you do create projects, um, then you can just add a project here and it will create this uh, unique URL and you can buy licenses. And this is also where you can see um, uh, as, people, as students sign up and, and um, redeem that license, you can see their book here. So this is where you can view all the students and their book content and give feedback, whether you give it through Classroom or whatever platform you use, but um, you can access the students' content there. Uh, we you have can a couple add... of questions, Carrie. Yeah, that'll and be we good. We have some new people in the room. So what I wanna do is just quickly have people go around, introduce themselves. Okay, do you, me, I'll do you, sharing? Yeah, go ahead and stop sharing. How do you see this use in your classroom and what questions do you have for Carrie? She's the inventor, founder, and CEO of this company. And this is incredible technology for books. All right, let's, <laughs> let's start with Nicole. Welcome to the building, Nicole. <laughs> Coach Mac. Hello, hello, hello. Greetings, everyone. Hello. I am Nicole Mac Griffin, originally <laughs> from Harlem, New York, by way of Allentown, PA, and then I moved to the Poconos in PA, where it is cold and snowy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I substitute teach for 17 years. I had a permanent position, but it was wiped away. 
that's okay. So now I'm in middle school teaching ESOL and substituting and doing Zoom classes. <laughs> I yes. am a step coach and dance coach for the Allentown School District. And that's a little bit about me. <laughs> you have any questions about the family book form? No, ma'am. It was self-explanatory. Everything looks good. I will be using it. Thank you. Wonderful. And please make sure you share experiences and share feedback, share quotes, because I can um, share that with Google and with ISTE and with lots of other companies want to showcase uh, US projects, because I have lots of case studies from Australia, where I started, and um, Singapore and India, but I don't have um, many case studies in the US. So please share if you want to. So we're the pioneers okay. in the US. <laughs> yes. And make sure to enter um, LT's ambassador code when you sign up, because then um, she can offer you incentives and um, help along the way as, as you need it. Absolutely. Thank you. Liz, I love that. Black power. <laughs> Black power. <laughs> Black power. Yeah, my kids are doing uh, uh, research papers on uh, the Black, Black History Month, you know, and they're um, they're gonna be um, introduced, uh, presenting it next next week, and they're like, "Well, why are we doing it so late? Uh, isn't it gonna be March already?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Let me let me talk to you for a minute." Just because it's on March doesn't mean that's the only time you can learn about Black History Month. Come on now. It's not Thank Black you. History. I was like, it's not, it's just Black History Month, just like, you know, what Hispanic Heritage Month, but I'm gonna, I'm not Hispanic for a month. I'm like Hispanic forever. Like, <laughs> get it together. Whatever. I was like, um, I like the program. I mean, I, I teach uh, um, your book. And I think that's where, I mean, I would want to use it in other areas, like my, my English kids, but I think that to start off, I would want to do it with your book because it's such a small group just so I can start off. You know, I think it, you you always want to start off with the, the class that's more active and yeah. more engaged because that's where you find the, you know, the, quirk, the quirks that work or don't work and stuff. Um, so yeah. I, I'm, I'm interested in that because I also want to have some um, writing of my kids that's not relating to everybody, like their experiences that they go through your book because yesterday was a really not a fun day. I had a mom send me an email saying, how rude are you? How inconsiderate um, are you um, for even we're going through this pandemic, how dare you ask these kids to pay $65? How dare you um, do a yearbook um, when their kid, the kids are not doing activities or anything? And I'm like, history is still happening. I, I, told, I sent an email back to her and I was like, ma'am, our kids are sending, like at least in my high school, some of our kids got their science experiment chosen. They, they were taken out to NASA they're up in space. Our kids are getting awards. Our kids are conditioning. I don't know. I didn't say it in a rude way, but I was like, where have you been? Like, <laughs> life has not stopped. We're working. Going, you know, we're working. It's, I think that it's just a matter of how you say it. So I want my kids to have that. And I think this is a cool idea. Um, and um, I'm an English teacher as well. So of course, this is, I, I want to just ask one question, though. Yeah. Um, because we're so, my district is just so focused on security yeah. and such. So, um, and I saw that you have the connection to the um, Google Classroom and whatnot. Yeah. Will it, uh, you said how much was it? $10 uh, or how much was it? Yeah, $10 for a book license. So, so if I want to have, if they're all just contributing to mine, yep. it would just be one. But if I want them to have their own, it would be 10 each. That's right, yes. And okay. it's online for a year. So it's um, good for projects like uh, the Family Recipe Book is a great fundraiser for the school. And it's a great way to justify money to parents. And so you can, um, 
you know, for $10, you can invite the class of kids to uh, contribute their favorite recipe and they have to talk to their family. They have to cook the recipe and then they take photos of them cooking it, eating it, and a little bit more about why is it their favorite. And so that class book is then um, quite thick because every kid is contributing at least sort of um, five, five, 10 pages because it's not just writing, it's photos but it's really personal to them because it, it's their family yeah. and their eating and their culture and it's, it's saved culture, recipe. Right? So it's a great class recipe book. And then you charge the parents $10 or $5 or, or nothing. You just give them the digital book online for a year, or you can just give them the PDF in a digital form, or you can print it. Um, or as family, if families do want a printed copy, then you can charge them $35, you know? And, and so it's a way that the, the class can make some money. It's a really fun personal project. The families love it. And so you get not just families wanting to buy one copy, they want to buy five copies because they want to give it to grandparents. They, um, and then some schools have even uh, letter dropped their communities and said, who wants to have um, a recipe book from our school? And then you get communities wanting to buy that school's recipe book so they can make money, you know? Um, so the more personal you can make it, the, the more valuable it is and parents see yeah. the value. But also, I well, also, oh, yeah. but also it, it sort of outsources the motivation. So instead of you as the teacher having to constantly be motivating these kids to log on to the lesson and contribute mm. to the lesson and you know even care about the lesson, you outsource the motivation to the family. So the families really want to have the end uh, recipe book or they really want to have the end uh, um, grandpa's memoir or you know whatever the personal uh, our yeah. holiday or why why um, black you know history is important like what does it mean to us or our Hispanic history what, what does it mean to us and then it's more personal and so the families are motivating the kids to finish the books. Well it's interesting you say that because when I was uh, my first year teaching I taught at my alma mater that was like my dream job to teach go back and teach at my alma mater and I got it I got to to live in my dream out for a year but it wasn't gonna it wasn't meant to be for me you know what I'm saying I accomplished it and they're like this is not where you need to be so but I at that school my thing was I was 11th graders so I I for for me to kind of not push them, but I, I, this was kind of like a, a way for them to know that like their stories are important, their voices are important and they must put those stories out there because nowadays we're becoming so, um, so used to having everything digital that we don't think about it. If we have no technology, where, is, where are the stories going to be? Yeah. Like who's, is it, if you don't have technology, Who's going to be reading these books? No one, because they're gone in space, you know, wherever they went. So I, I told my kids how important it was. And I, I paid my own money. Like, it was just normal, you know. But I went to, I asked them, okay, what is their, they chose their favorite piece of work that they were proud of and that they want, they wanted to show. So some kids gave me prose, some kids gave me poems, you know, just different things. And they were proud of it. And yeah. I put it together and I physically gave each kid a copy. And it's so interesting. The other day I found it, like the, yeah. the copy that I had. Yeah. And I think I, one of the students like, um, like sent me a message on Facebook and she's like, do you remember, do you remember you gave us a book and we put it together? And I'm like, yes, well, I still have that book. I still have it. And That's I right. just look back at it and I'm like, such an idiot. Why'd you write that story? But it was a good story back then. And I was like, <laughs> like that just warmed my heart because I'm like, yeah, that's important, you know? So I, I, and another, like, I don't know about you guys, but I have family in Mexico um, and we're separate. So I was, I was thinking of doing a recipe book, like a recipe video blog. Like we would video all of my, my family members, but this is a good idea to just yeah. do a family recipe and we can do it in Spanish and they can just do their own thing and give yeah. the directions and then put the pictures so that 
I'm, I'm, I'm down to doing this for my own family because I personally don't think we as minorities put a lot of our stuff on writing and that's what we need to put out there, you know? And that's exactly it. If, um, you know, people say that they want to have a voice and migrants mm -hmm. often don't feel that they have a voice or an opportunity. So it is a great opportunity for them to speak in any language, mm -hmm. um, produce a, a published book in any language, a, a pers as personalized as they want. But the added dimension is getting students to go and help them do it because then it monetizes students' time. And so mm -hmm. that community would pay that student to do that project, um, potentially, you know, it's yeah. opportunities for, for lower socioeconomic areas and schools to be able to monetize kids' time. So, you know, I was saying to LT before about having child labor. So it is, it's child labor, but, it, you know, they, they, they can get some money for projects that they do or families buy the book. So it's outsourcing the motivation and outsourcing the expense of it. But that documenting, like having a, a, a primary source historical document of something real that's a, that personal and, you know, those kids, that COVID-19 and me book that um, classes have uh, created, those kids have been just so diligent with the writing and taking photos and participating and documenting because they were really um, felt responsible and proud that they're documenting history and that generations um, in the future will be reading their, their important documentation of this event. So kids really That's feel true. responsible. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a great way to motivate them because this is important to document this stuff. It is. Absolutely. And, and there's so much about fake news and, you know, everybody's watching their own channel to get, um, you know, listen to people who are saying things that they already believe, you know, nobody is broadening their horizons. Nobody is listening to anybody that has a different opinion. So this is um, a great way for kids to be able to document what's real for them so that they know this is real news and they share it in the community. This is real. But even for research projects, it's trying to get kids to talk to people outside of um, themselves, you know, outside of their class, talk to their family, talk to go and interview people in the community. So as a research project, they're collecting primary source content. So they're not just watching fake news or fake broadcasts or, or something that they don't believe. They've gone and collected the content so they know it's real. That is absolutely true. Dolores, did you have any questions? Oh, you did have two questions, Dolores. <laughs> I wanted to know the age group in which this was um, started. And I think LT answered it. She said it's being used in middle schools and high school. Yeah. Um, Cause right now I'm teaching elementary. That's why I asked. I mean, even though a lot of them are very savvy I think it would be something um, that they would be happy to engage in as well. Well, I've done lots of pilot testing with different age groups and the biggest problem has always been the teacher, not the students. <laughs> so it depends on how confident the teacher is. <laughs> but if the teacher um, is confident, you know, grades five and six, you know, um, that's sort of the youngest that I've gone down to, but I think it could be younger. There's, um, and it, depending on how confident uh, the, the teacher is, the parents, whether the kids have got technology, um, with the Google sign-in, that's taken away a lot of problems because um, kids just couldn't type their emails. They couldn't remember how to spell their names. It was just a diabolical mess. But if they're using Google sign-in, they don't have to worry about that whole, um, you know, typing in their information, then, um, you know, that's much easier. And so they it just, they see a template page and they write directly into that page. They upload photos and you can do that activity within the class as well. And so you as the teacher can be more on top of them. But if, if there's parents that are very um, engaged with the kids learning, then parents can help with that stuff. It's very basic. Um, exactly. But you're also addressing the question about security. Um, we're a Google partner, so um, you can use the Google sign on, but we're also a student privacy pledge signatory. And we also use AWS servers. So we don't use Google's cloud um, storage. So we keep it separated. And so um, we use AWS secure encrypted servers and they're based in the US. So if the customer, the, the, the information is stored on servers where they, wherever the customer is. So it will be kept in the US if you do projects. Um, 
So it's very secure. Your book is private until you share it. Even when you invite people to contribute to your book, they can't see what's in the book until you share it with them. So books are private. If students are creating their family book or, or um, you know, a project by themselves, then nobody can see their book until, um, you know, they share it. So they only, you, when you give them a chapter, for example, or pages, they yeah. only see those pages. Um, they only see their work. Yeah, yeah their and, work. Yeah, until you share okay. them. Okay, yeah, that was my other question because that's what I do with my yearbook kids. I can't be giving them access to the whole yearbook. That would just be insane. They would be <laughs> taking left and right, right? So I just give them their page. So yeah. another thing is if, because to do a lot of web filtering, we talked about that today in class. So there's a lot of filters that they use. And like, if I put it out there where I'm like, okay, I wanna use this, you know, um, your, your service, like if I'm going through you, if they are like, okay, um, do they go follow all the protocol, whatever, whatever. And they're like, yeah, so you can use it. Or I, I wanted to know if you guys had those in place, just in case they ask me, because we can't yeah. even use Kahoot because the kids are like, they don't want our kids to have, they don't want the kids' information to be in a, you know, um, saved for every yeah. time they log in. Yeah. So um, we've just been approved in the state of New York um, for the, I can't remember the, the acronym of the, the community, but yeah, we signed, um, that we passed their stringent requirements. So if we've okay. passed theirs, we would pass anybody's. But you, um, we, we can also sign a, a personal agreement with the school or with the district. So I will sign that, um, uh, uh, there's an addendum that I can sign to the privacy. But on our website, if you scroll to the bottom, it's got our privacy and terms. And so you could share that link with your uh, school or whoever needs to see what, um, what my IT, my IT, yeah. Yeah, yeah, share cool. that with them. But if they want us to sign um, an additional contract, I just email it to me and I'll sign that. I'm happy to, because I've jumped through so many hoops to make sure that we comply with um, even the European, the, um, the GD, GDR or uh, whatever it is, um, you know, privacy compliance. So we, we, we don't collect any content from the kids. Um, we store it in the uh, Amazon servers encrypted. So I, do, I don't see it. My IT team don't see anybody's content. We don't um, collect any of the students' information around what school or what um, geographically where they are. We don't have anything. I don't, we just know, um, if they use their Google sign-on, we don't know anything, you know, because it goes through Google. If, if I'm in charge of the program, I can see everybody's. If you are creating, you're the creator of the book, then you can see everybody's content. Yep. Okay. Um, but uh, when you invite them to contribute to the book, they automatically get um, 2,500 words that they can contribute and uh, 10 photo pages. So if you tell, you got to be uh, specific about what you want the kids to, how much you want them to contribute. Because if you want to, each child has a double page spread so that they maybe get text on one side and a photo page on the other side then there's about 200 words fit to a page. So typically if a teacher wants um, each student to have a double page spread, then you would say in the message to them, only contribute up to 200 words or uh, 200 words for your poem or 200 words for your story and one photo page. And so they can choose one photo to a page, two photos to the page or four photos to the page. Um, so it's their choice and they click submit and that automatically formats into your book. You have got a little bit of functionality if, if the kid has written 230 words and, it, and it's sort of bumped everybody over, um, you can sort of delete a couple of the words or maybe um, squash the text up a little bit. There's a little bit of functionality around doing that, but there's, it's not really a design product. So there's limited design functionality at the moment. Oh, okay. But one of my like, other questions yeah, was 10 minutes. Okay. Hey, one of my other questions real quick was, um, does it do a lot of grammatical corrections? 
or do you have to proof it or have someone else proof it? You as the teacher have to proof everybody's work. No, so on their template page, if the students are contributing content, there is the red underlined under spelling mistakes and things like that. So oh. um, they, they can see if they've done spelling mistakes. But um, if once they've submitted their work and you can see their content, you can edit it and correct any mistakes that you see. But okay. ideally it's getting them to uh, edit their work and make sure- And that's in every language? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, wow, that's great. So at the moment, the, um, uh, the digital book does any language. So you can speak Arabic, you can speak Chinese, you can speak um, any language, but the converting it to the PDF, if you want to have the PDF file or if you want to um, print it, uh, the languages are only the Roman lettered languages at the moment. So Chinese, um, it will work in the digital book, but it won't convert to the PDF at this stage. But this is because I'm concentrating on um, English speaking and um, the Germanic languages at people at the moment, because um, there's, you can spend millions and millions of dollars on technology. You know, I've got to prove that teachers want this, that people want it, and then I will um, broaden it to other languages. Can you show us your light source? <laughs> yeah. We have like five minutes left and we're gonna have another part two to this because I want us to play around with it and create a little project while we're here. But I want yeah. you guys to see the view outside her window. It's incredible. Do you, you want to oh. keep recording or do you want to stop the recording? I'll stop the recording right now.